this is a presentation about uh, microvascular decompression surgeries done for uh, hemifacial spasms at the center for MVD surgeries. These surgeries which are 110 in number were done without neurophysiological monitoring and the statistics was dissected over the period of two months. These were performed between 2008 and 2018. 10 patients operated by single surgeon were included. We operated them in lateral position by retromastoid route and follow up ranging from 6 months to 10 years was available. Their files, clinical files were studied. 82 patients were interviewed in person, 28 patients were telephonically interviewed and two were, since they were not contactable, they were not included in this study. All these patients had uh, CISS sequences of the seven nerve uh, which were positive for uh, neurovascular conflict. Out of 110, 51 were males and 59 were females. Age ranged from 21 to 72 years. Left side was affected in 52 and right side in 57. Area of the face affected. Uh, entire one side of the face was affected in 102 patients. Area around the eye only was affected in six patients and area at the angle of the mouth only was affected in two patients. 99% patients had typical or type 1 hemifacial spasms. Uh, that is the spasms which started in the, re uh, in the region of the eye and then moved downwards affecting the entire face. And uh, 11 patients had a typical progression which started at the angle of the mouth and then progressed upwards. Among the clinical features, social embarrassment and handicap in social occupational progress was found in all, that is 110. Difficulty in reading, driving and daily activities was reported by 73. Clicks in the ear with spasms in 23, hearing impairment during spasms in 12, tinnitus during spasm in 8, facial weakness in 43, facial pain following spasms in 34, pain deep in the ear and pinna in 3. Insomnia was reported by 19 patients. Associated trigeminal neuralgia was seen in 7, glossopharyngeal neuralgia in 2, increased lacrimation after the attack was seen in 9, clinical depression under treatment was seen in 5, and 3 patients actually reported suicidal ideation uh, due to severe depression. The outcome was dissected uh, as excellent, very good, good and bad. Uh, excellent was when there were no spasms, very good when occasional spasm but less than one per day, good when more than one spasm per day but less than five and bad more than five spasms per day. The questionnaire included these questions, have spasms disappeared, how much time did it take for the spasms to disappear after surgery, effects on the hearing ability, facial function and quality of life subjective assessment. Out of 110, 106 had excellent outcome, very good type of outcome was seen in 2, good type of outcome in 2 and there was uh, no patient in the bad group. Transient facial paresis was seen in 14 patients following surgery and it took anywhere between a month and 4 to 6 months for such paresis to improve but all of them improved completely. Severe hearing loss, which was permanent, was seen in one patient. Non-fatal meningitis was seen in three patients. Meningocele, which needed repair, was seen in two. CSF rhinorrhea was seen in two, where both patients needed closure. Post-operative videos were also analyzed, along with the drawings and notes made immediately after surgery. And here you can see such example where uh, the drawings were made immediately after surgery and various points were noted uh, which were found noteworthy during surgery. The compressing uh, elements were carefully uh, noted either in the form of 
a diagrammatic representation or uh, in notes. Available patient videos were also studied. These are few of the examples. A young woman with severe right-sided hemifacial spasm and the same woman uh, after surgery narrating her experience. Again, an example of very, very severe right-sided hemifacial spasms, socially embarrassing and few months after surgery, the spasms are completely gone. Again, right-sided severe spasms and this is post-operative one year. Again, left-sided spasm this time. The patient describing the problems associated with the spasm. This is immediately after surgery, no spasms for the first time in many years and this is a long time after surgery. Now, a young woman with severe right-sided spasms, this is immediately after surgery, the spasms completely disappeared and confidence regained. It's a young man with severe left-sided spasm. One month after surgery, there is slight facial weakness here, which slowly recovered. This is four years after surgery. This is a woman with severe left-sided spasms. One and a half months after surgery, spasms completely gone. And this is eight years after surgery, spasms gone. This is another case of right-sided spasm, immediate result half an hour after surgery and few days after surgery. Very, very severe kind of spasms in this person, right-sided spasms, socially disabling and this is many years after surgery where he is narrating about his experience. Left-sided severe spasms and many years after surgery during follow-up. Severe left-sided spasm, this patient traveled from far away to us for getting treated. This is after four days and this is after many months. A very severe left-sided spasm, this person is a bank manager, socially disabling problem. This is three years after surgery, the spasms completely gone. Example of right-sided severe spasms before surgery and after surgery, the spasms completely gone. Again, right-sided severe spasms after surgery, few months. This video was sent to us as a follow-up from far away. This is a person with severe right-sided spasm after surgery, spasms completely gone. This is the same person actually with severe left-sided spasm. This is after surgery. This is left-sided spasms. This is after surgery, disappearance of the spasms. So all these videos, these are few examples of the videos that we have in our record. All these video were, videos were carefully dissected. And uh, as you can see here, all the diagrams which were made immediately after surgery helped us immensely to actually analyze the compressive elements along with the videos. So all these diagrams were again uh, revisited and the conflicts were then grouped depending on the types. Type. So these various challenging situations, variables, delicate nature of the 7th, 8th complex and confined approach to the conflict zone make these surgeries uh, quite challenging. And in conclusion, I feel that after operating on these pathologies for uh, the last 10 years or so. So MVD for hemifacial spasms is a challenging but rewarding surgery. Expectations in the minds of patients are usually high. Margin of error for the surgeon is low and tolerance for complication is even lower. Unlike trigeminal nerve, both 7th and 8th complex, uh, both the 7th and 8th nerves are functionally extremely delicate. Variations in vascular anatomy is almost a norm. Every case has to be evaluated on table and treated with tailored approach. Every case needs tedious dissection near brainstem. We hope our uh, proposed grouping system will make these surgeries easier. And these were some of the diagrams, post-operative diagrams, which immensely helped us in this research. Thank you very much for your patient hearing. And 
on behalf of the Center for MVD Surgery for treating uh, hemifacial spasms and trigeminal neuralgia, I request you to uh, spread awareness about these disorders and about MVD surgeries. Thank you very much.